Hello, hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the next version of the live stream of Amplify and Flutter and other stuff. I need to find a name to this, but right now we are just going with the wind, right? Like <laughs> we don't, like we just try to have a live stream every Thursday to talk about Flutter, talk about Amplify related stuff to actually help you out with some of your concerns, some of your questions and so on, and just move forward with it. So plan for today is actually creating a project from scratch, adding an image picker to it. And after we have the image picker and everything, I would like to add Amplify to the project and actually upload an image to our to our backend, to our S3 buckets per se. So we will talk about it and learn about this one and we will continue with it later on. So in case if you have any questions or comments and so on, please do ask it. I will try to answer it along the way. In the meantime, I will just carry on with the live stream. I'm planning to be online around like 40, 45 minutes. So I just try to find the optimal time and optimal um, pays for you people so you can learn the most of it. All right, so now let's start with having our amazing background. You might be remembering this from the NASA's uh, web telescope, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so first thing that we are going to do is we are going to open up our ID. You can open up any ID that you would like to have. It's totally up to you. I will use IntelliJ now because I find it really cool. And we don't have any dependencies or anything right now. So you can just check out a Flutter project and just run it. And you will be saying that amplify image picker S3 bucket upload. As you can see, the naming is amazing. We don't care about any other platform and we don't care about the organization if you have a real app you need to give a proper organization to this obviously so we just say create and it will create the project for us you can see this mario brother is doing what it's supposed to do and next thing that i'm going to be doing is actually increasing the font size for you folks so you can actually see it better so let's do font here so first thing is I'm going to raise it to 15 so it is more readable. And also the font here, exactly. I will make it 15 as well, just so everyone can see it properly. If you can see it, just let me know. I'm OK. Hi, right, welcome. So all right, now that we have everything, let's open up our iOS simulator and actually Let's have the Android emulator instead because, yeah, that would be a lot better for our case because in case you don't know the bit difference between emulators and simulators, it's basically simulator is a platform that is helping you to simulate the environment, but it is not like emulator, which is an actual device experience. So that is why I decided to carry on with the Android emulator. So. If something messes up here, probably we will mess it up in the app as well. Okay, so we have a Google Pixel 3a that is going to be working for us here. And let me make it as big as possible. And let me make this a bit, tiny bit of smaller so you can see it directly here. Perfect. So probably you know the first version of your Flutter applications. It's a counter application. And what we want to have is first, we want to get rid of it. Second, we would like to have a simple list of items that is showing us the uploaded files and that's all. So first things first, let's go to our holy website, which is called pub.dev. This is the website that it are that you are going to be using and that you have been using for finding out the correct packages for your applications. You might be using packages for several reasons. You might be actually communicating with your 
native platform. You might be doing HTTP calls and everything. And packages are helping you to have an abstraction over these complicated operations. And you might carry on with whatever you have. So here, let's say image picker, because as we have talked about, we will be having image picker here. So we have the image picker. This is a library from the Flutter team. You can see that it has a support for Android version SDK 21, iOS version uh, bigger than nine, and there's a web support for this as well. You can add this image picker library to your application in any way that you want. And we need to do a couple of things that are described here as well. Don't worry, we will do it together so you don't need to feel like you're lost or something along the way. Let me make this bigger so you can read it easily. So first things first, you can add your packages in several different ways. One of the ways to do that is you can go to your project. And what was the name of my project again? Yeah, Amplify Image Picker something, something. Amplify Image Picker, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we are in our project. What we need to do is, what we can do is, we can say Flutter pub add and the name of the library that we have. Why this is good? Because this will easily help you to add the latest version of the image picker in the library that you might have. So this is really important and it's really valuable to know. This way, you don't need to always like go and check out the latest version and blah, blah, blah. You can just say, okay, let me just have the latest version of it. And if you go to your pop spec file now, you can see that the library's latest version is added here. And what we need to do afterwards is you can either do the pub get by clicking this one, or you could say flutter pub get here as well. All of these, these options are valid, so you can pick whatever makes sense to you. All right, so now we have the library. Let's see what we need to do for installation. So this says, this plugin requires iOS, iOS 9 or higher for deciding or for putting the minimum version of iOS here for deciding on a minimum iOS version for your Flutter projects, what you need to do is you need to go to your pod file. You can see that this platform iOS thing here is like commented out. You need to revert this one and you need to put the version number that you want to have here. Okay, that's it. So for the Android one, it's the same. You need to go to your Android folder. Inside the Android, you will have like build Gradle file and you will have minimum SDK version here. And you can just simply either change it here or follow the documentation here as well. Okay, let's continue. So in the meantime, for the iOS, what we need is we need to add the following keys to our info.plist file that is under our runner folder. So let's go to the iOS one again. And under runner, you can see that we have this info.plist file. If you can see it, by the way, just let me know. I can actually make it bigger. Anyway, what it says is you need to add these properties for describing why you need it and why it is valuable. And when you add these stuff, which is really important, people, when you add these stuff, the App Store application assessment process will be happening easier for you because they will know why you need these descriptions or why you need these permissions. Other way around, they would just say that, okay, but what's the point? Why, why should I use it? Why should I need this one and they wouldn't be able to answer your questions right so that is why we need to add this stuff and once we add this stuff we should be good to go all right so next step so what we need to do is we will add these into our uh, yeah into this file so 
Dun, dun, dun. You can add it to any place that you want. It is totally up to you. You can just say that like key here and say that like key here and you need to define the library here as well. One thing to keep in mind is that iOS version 14 or more to get the yeah, image picker or just use a real device. But we are going to be using a real device experience, which is an Android emulator anyway, right? So it's not a problem for us at the moment. So what you can do to just copy paste whatever you need is actually, you can just say, this is what I would do, right? You can just say, okay, like, what should I do? And you just need to do this. This means that you don't need to write all of these stuff all the time. And you can just, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can just say that, okay, let me actually have these stuff for me. You can just say that this app requires access to the Photo library here, camera is the one that is here. And lastly, we will have the microphone as well. Why do we need the microphone? It's because when you intend to have videos, you will have some sound in it as well, right? So that is why you need to have actually a proper scenario, proper experience to have a video so that is why you need to add the microphone usage description as well anyway so from android 4.3 or higher no configuration is needing the plugin plugin should work out of the box for you but it is recommended to have uh, like in case it gets killed when there's love in the me memory and so on and so forth you can do extra stuff and that you might want to do like request le legacy external storage kind of cases here, but for Android, basically you don't need to do anything. But you need to do is if the data is lost and if you want to keep the lost data when the app is killed with low memory, you can follow this along. But for our case, we will not be needing this. We will be simply using the library at the lowest level, let's say. All right, so there are some examples here about how to pick a file and so on and so forth, but we will do this stuff by ourselves anyway. So first things first, let's go to the main.dart file, okay? And I will say that, where are we? Yeah, here. I will just say that, just remove everything, all right? We will do everything from scratch because we can. Okay, so I'm just saying that void main, and I will just say that run app, and I'm going to be having a amplify, amplify image upload app here. Okay, and for this app, what I'm going to be doing is that I will create a state less rigid call this amplify image upload app, fix the problem that I might be seeing here and say that, okay, now I will create an image picker here. File image picker equals image picker that I have created earlier. And what I need to do is, first I need to get rid of the counts because if I have final variable that is not decided when we run the application, it just like that class cannot be a const class. So what we need to do is we will just create a material app, which is going to be a home for, yeah, home for our amplify image uh, list page okay so this will be a page to keep the list of the things as well once we have everything settled for us okay so what we need to do is 
again, state list widget. This will be the page. And actually, we won't be needing this. So we can make this a const again. And we can make this a const as well. And actually, fix everywhere. Perfect. So what we need to do is we will get rid of this const here. We will make this non-const and remove this. So now we have the image picker, OK? And for the image picker, I want to have a floating action button to open up the image picker for me. And in the first place, I will just show the text of the selected image here. So what I need to do is I will just turn this into a stateless widget because I will change the text after something is selected and select something from the list. So what I need to do in my scaffold is that first I will just create an F bar for the sake of creating and saying image picker S3 buckets. And after I have that, I will just add a floating action button, which is going to be an extended version of floating action button to have a label and it will just Say that, hold on, perfect. It will just say that pick an image. Okay, this one is again a const. And when I click, we will see what I should do in a second. So now that we have everything in place, let's run the app, right? Let's see what it looks like right now. So we already had the settings and everything installed. So we don't need to actually do anything for the Android part. We already did the iOS part and we haven't run it here. So it's completely fine as well. So what I'm going to do now is when I click, I would like to open up a bottom sheet to give me an option about if I should be picking from camera or if I should be picking an image from basically anywhere that I want. Would that be okay? Yeah, it would be really cool, right? We, all, we will have a nice gesture. So first things first, Is anyone, does anyone know how we can open a bottom sheet? Like, do you, have any of you used it before? I'm really curious. I will just give a couple of seconds in case there's like a delay in between the, um, live streams, I'm just curious. Okay, I will just continue then. So what we need to do is we will be using a shove model bottom sheet, which is going to be the bottom sheet that we are going to be shoving on the screen. And the screen will have a builder for us, which is an actually a builder that should have a rigid builder and it's at the end of the day, it's just a new context reference for us. So what we need to do is I will just create a function that has a context here and these functions that are directly here, which are working without a name, without a signature here, it is called an anonymous function. So we have an anonymous function here that should return a column for us and this column is going to keep the references of the options that we might have. So I will just say that, I will just say that I, let's have, an, have a list style and leading should be an icon of, I can start, I think there should be a camera and the title or text yeah, exactly. Title should be camera. And I will also put an on tab. So when it is clicked, we will do something. And same thing will go to this one as well. The other one will be gallery. This showing a different thing, but okay, let's continue with this one for now. And now we have the gallery and let's fix all the const problems. Perfect. So now that I have this one, when I click on this, it will show me 
this nice things here. So we started off good. The next thing that I'm going to do is I will just say that main axis size be the minimum. Let's see if it's going to fix something for us. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't want this to be as big as something. I want to, I want this to be as big as I need. So next thing is when I click, I would like to close this one. And how I can do it, it is actually, we can just say that navigator off context, right? And we will just say pop. The reason that it is going to work is that this bottom sheet that you have seen is actually the part of the ecosystem or part of the uh, library that we have. So I click on this, now it is closed. Click on this, now it is closed. Next thing is we will just use this picker to get an image or get a file. So let's get either an image from the gallery or a camera. So for this purpose, let's use the code that they provide to us. So I'm going here. I would just say that, okay, let's do this. And you can say that, okay, but what's going on? You, like, first of all, it is not called picker. And there is this really fancy stuff here. So this means that this picking an image operation is actually an asynchronous operation. So we need to wait until it is done to get the result of it. So we can fix it in two different ways. A, we can make this on tap an asynchronous function. And once it is done, you can see that this operation or this uh, code will be working out of the box automatically for us. I will increase the Lines a bit. Yeah, that makes more sense. Perfect. So for the camera, I will have the camera. And for the gallery, obviously, I will have the gallery. So now I made it asynchronous. And let's make this gallery as well. And so far, I don't want to do anything else. I will just rerun the application to see how it's going to behave. And I click show something, I click on camera, it doesn't show anything. Do you know why? Let's check the possible reasons. Let's go back here. It says missing plugin exception. No implementation found for method pick image on channel image picker. So what we need to do is we will close the app now. We will just do a pub get and we will rerun the application one more time. And the reason is that if I remember correctly, after we add the library, we didn't do a hot restart, or sorry, like all over restart, but we just did a hot restart. And once we run the application on Flutter, you need to keep in mind that your platform needs to have a reference to that library. And if you want to have that reference in your library, what you need to do is quite straightforward. You need to just stop the app and make it more, yeah, make it make it more available for you. <laughs> and that's all. Like once you did, did that, it will be actually working even better with a fresh, nice install. All right. So I'm hoping that it's going to be working now. Camera, bam. You can see that now we have the emulator's camera. You can take a picture. You can say, okay, this is selected. And you can say that, okay, something happened and this thing has been cached or has been selected already as well. Okay, this is working fine. Let's see the gallery as well. In the gallery, we don't see anything. You can check out the photos. Obviously, there's nothing there. But what, let, let's, let's do something different. Let's say... Let's have a dash flutter image here and download one of these and actually use it later on to, you know, just check out and see it in our application. So where is this? Do, do, do. Amplify image thingy, gallery. You can see that 
If I select, it shows something to me. Okay, perfect. First step is done. Next thing that we need to do is we will get this image and we will add this to our S3 bucket. So first, let's talk about what S3 bucket is because as a concept, it might be complicated for you if you don't know what it is. So there is this really beautiful image <laughs> that I'm going to be making way bigger now. So S3 buckets are actually like, it's an Amazon technology that is going to be helping you out to keep your files by a reference or by a name with it inside your inside cloud. So what it does is it just gets your information, puts it into a bucket and says that, okay, whenever you need it, I guarantee that you can reach out to this because it's not just like in one place, it's actually distributed as well. It is a quite decent system that is actually used way, way widely in the industry. It's called like S3 is actually a, like simple storage service. Like they're making this as simple as possible by just saying that, okay, like we have the buckets, we have the objects for it, and these are going to have some metadata if you want it to describe. And if you don't want it, that's also fine. You can just put these information into the website as well. So what you need to do for making this work, what you need to do is first, you need to have an, ampl uh, have an Amplify app ready for you. And we, just, we are just going to do that together. So first things first. You need to have your Amplify CLI installed. If you have not yet, I will just share a link with you to do these operations on the chat. Let me do it. So this is here. And I will also share it on Twitch as well. This is also here. Perfect. So I shared the links with you. You can just check it out and see how it goes. And... What we are going to do is, once we have the Amplify CLI installed, first, we will go to the directory of our application and say, Amplify in it. So if it is your first time, it will ask you to log into your AWS account and so on. But if it's not your first time, you will see that Amplify will automatically tell you to, okay, now I'm ready to initialize this application. What should I call it? You can name anything that you want it to be, or you can pick the name from here. You can have the default configuration that is working for you, or you can just say no to this and carry on with whatever makes sense to you. I will just say yes to this to continue with. You can have the authentication method of AWS profile that you have selected earlier, or you can have access keys, like if you're in a distributed system and if you do not, do not have a, AWS profile for you, you can just get the access keys and make it work for you. Now, luckily we have the profile, as I said, like if you have logged in, you will be having this as well. And lastly, which profile that you want to use, you might have several like IAM profiles bound to your account. So you can pick any uh, account that you have, but I will just pick the one that is here. And, oh, sorry, not this one. Let's pick this one here. Once it is picked, it will do the initialization of your project and everything. And it is going to be really cool because you will see that all of these role assignments and everything will be happening out of the box for you. In the meantime, it happens. Let's continue and let's talk about actually what go we are going to be using for uploading mechanism. So for uploading, we will use a system called storage. It's like Amplify storage. It's again, like, oh, it's a system that is designed over the S3 buckets that I explained earlier. And it will help you to directly just have your data uploaded to a platform and you can have a chance to list the files that you have, download the files, like remove the files and you can decide on access levels and many more as well. Today, we will be doing the uploading, listing, and actually showing the file together, hopefully. So you can like you can see that it asks for a like, couple of things. We are going to be taking care of that together. But overall, 
if you want to take a look into the documentation, this is the best place for you. You can just go to the Endify documentation for Flutter and go to the storage and have more information about it. I will also share the links on the chat about this. And you can just like, simply have a reference about it. Perfect. Now that we have this one, you can go back to your project and you can see that actually now you have an Amplify folder and you have an Amplify configuration.dart file, which is a file that is generated to keep your configuration information over your project. Okay, now that we have these like file references here and now that we have the Amplify con configuration, the next natural step is adding the storage option for us. So what we need to do is we will say amplify add storage. So once we add this one, it will ask us like, what do you want to keep? Do you want to have a NoSQL database or do you want to have content? I'm going to select the content because I want to have this. It says you need to have the authentication for you because if you want to have storage, your users needs to be authenticated. That is why what you need to pick is an authentication option and if you want to have it or not. So you say yes, it will ask for a configuration option for you. You can pick anything that you want. I will go with the default configuration one and the username for carrying on. And once I'm done, it will say, okay, now let's go back to doing the operation that we need to do for M2 5 storage. So first you need to like provide a friendly name for your research, for your project here. You can pick anything that you want. Or you can pick the default one. You can pick a bucket name, meaning that where, like you need to pick a place name to save your data. And I'm just going to use whatever it is. And it says, who should have access? Should it have guests or authenticated users only? I will just say authenticated users. And the authenticated users can like create, update, delete, and, and read whatever it is out there. And it says like you want to have a Lambda trigger for your S3 bucket. We don't need it now. We are not going to be using. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Now we have actually added authentication and we have added storage to our project. Not, um, not in the way that that is going to be in part of the Flutter project yet, but as a configuration, it is added. In the meantime, let's do an Amplify push. This is going to be pushing all the changes to the cloud to make it available for everyone. Okay, just say yes. You can see that you have the authentication ready, storage ready, then let's carry on. So it is updating resources in the cloud. And yeah, this might, this might take a couple of minutes, but it should be fine. In the meantime, let's add our libraries to our project. So first thing is, you might remember we will do Flutter Pub App. And the name of the library that we are going to be adding is Amplify Auth Cognito. So this is going to be the library that is going to be helping us to have actual authentication. Now that it is added, the next step is we will have an Amplify Authenticator library, which is a library that is giving us a UI flow for having authentication directly. It says, da, da, da. Amplify, da, 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 da. okay, this doesn't exist, so maybe I forget the name of the library. Let's check it out. Authenticator, and the name of it is Amplify Authenticator. Isn't it what I have written? Okay, I forget a U. Okay. Let's continue. All right, well, now we have this one as well. What we need to do next is, obviously the name, like we need to have the storage library as well. So let's check it out. Let's see what it is called. I will just say Amplify Storage. 
So you can see that Amplify Storage S3 is the one that we are going to be using now. And I just copied that, not this one. I will just say force quit to this because yeah, I don't want to have my Slack open right now. And I will just paste this here. And after I pasted it, I will just say Flutter Pop Get, which is going to be bringing back all the libraries that it's going to be that, that I'm going to be using from the cloud. It is still uploading the resources, so we just actually did a parallel work for us, so that's something new. <laughs> so in the meantime, it is doing this one. Let's check it out. Okay, this library is done, so this is something that's really cool. Okay, so for uploading, we might do a couple of things. It is totally up to you to decide. But what we are going to be using is like, since we have the image picker, we will get the file and we will actually, after the file is there, we will just say that, okay, let's upload these files to our system. Let's wait a couple of seconds until this is done. Now we are the three people. If Anyone has any questions in the meantime, just carry on, just ask it. I would be more than happy to help. And if you are not following yet, either now or later on, follow this guy, offline programmer Mo. He's my teammate, he's a really cool guy. He's doing a lot of Flutter content and just give him a follow, all right? Okay, let's continue. Now everything is on the cloud, everything is ready. So first thing is, and how we are going to be authenticated. If you're asking this, that is a great question. So what we need to do is first, we will actually wrap this with authenticator widget, which is a special widget to let the app know that, okay, everything in here is under control. Everything here, I will take care of this. And afterwards you will say that builder, okay, I want to keep this in mind that I want to have the authentication flow working for me, it says. And if it is successful, it will take us to the image upload page now. So everything is ready. Let's run the application one more time. The application will be like running quite fast because we because of the like few uh, like libraries that we have, everything should be all right. If I do this, how, how would it feel? Would it feel better or like, this one makes me huge. Okay, let's continue with this one for now. In the meantime, it is running. It says, okay, nice. Yes, so we, we didn't do the minimum SDK version. I told you to do, but I didn't. So let's go back to the minimum SDK version here because the Amplify libraries expect you to have minimum SDK version 21 for your Amplify applications. So remember that if you want to have Amplify libraries working for you, you need to have minimum version of 21. So let's rerun this and let's see the magic and hopefully everything will be really cool. Now it is running. So show you the Mario brother here. It is installing the app. And let's see. Okay, it is failing and I know the reason. The reason is that unfortunately everything is not Extremely easy as uh, it seems like right now everything is going great. But one thing to keep in mind is that we need to configure the Amplify libraries. Like that means that we need to say that, okay, we have authentication, we have storage for us, and all of these are going to be part of our application. You can do it in like several different ways. I will show you in different way than the documentation so first we will do this an asynchronous function and what we are going to do is we will just say wait configure amplify which will 
actually call a function called configure amplify and it is going to be a feature. So let's write that function here. And future void, configure amplify, async. So what we need to do is, we need to try on exception catch E. And I will just say that the error is e. perfect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is first I will say, okay, I have the authentication library, amplify auth cognito. Second is I have a storage. So I will just say amplify storage S3. And next thing is, next thing that I'm going to do is I will just say amplify, add plugins, all right? And it is going to be expecting a, where is it? It is here, perfect. It is going to be expecting a list of plugins from us. And I'm just getting a message that the code that I'm writing is harder to see. So let me cha change the, uh, actually let me make this 24. I think this, this should be better to read and the other font that I have here should be 18. Perfect. I think everything should be better now. I hope that we did this earlier, but uh, it's fine. We learn every week. Next week we will go with this one. So I'm just checking out. Yeah, I've been told much better. Okay, perfect. Cool. So. Uh, I'm not going to put this in an edited version then. I will just keep it as a live it's a live stream. So I will share it around. You can check it out. But if it's not readable, I will do a proper version of it later on. <clears throat> All right. So we have the Amplify here. So you can see that this does know what it's supposed to do. And this is what we are going to be doing. We will just say... Amplify Flutter because it will say that you need to have a proper reference to the Amplify. And this Amplify reference is actually coming from Amplify Flutter, which is helping us to configure our libraries and add everything together. And I will just, okay, this is already passed. So there we go. And we can ignore this one. So now we will add auth and storage here. Okay. And next thing that we are going to be doing is that Amplify configure. And this configuration will get Amplify config value, which is created inside Amplify configuration dot dart file that we have here. So let's run the app one more time and see how it goes. Let's see how it evolves. So now this is going to be configuring the Amplify file and this is going to be doing it before running the app, hopefully. Ah, damn. I didn't want it to do runs on guard, uh, but this is how we need to do so like let's fix this problem like we would do okay let's put this message here this is a really common message and you can do your situations like any other app first you can say that okay ensure initialize which is an actual function that is called later on but in here, you need to be sure that, okay, this is initialized. This is definitely working. Then we can be sure that it is going to be running. And I'm seeing an error here. It says no authorized exception. Authenticate, unauthenticate as it is not a part of for this user pool, et cetera, et cetera. So like we don't have an authenticated user. So let's have an authenticated user. So I will just say, create an account and I will create an account with my name, my 
Amazing. Super safe password. And my email, which is going to be a really nice chance to an account. Once this account is created, I'm going to be showing you this stuff here. So you will have an actual, okay, you don't see me, so may, let's make me big. So you can see that we have a verification code. So the verification code comes automatically as well for free. What was it? I forgot to check it. <laughs> and it is 272120. All right. Like now it is confirmed and everything. And now we have everything on our plate. Let's rerun this application. And you can see that we have the token, we have everything. Perfect. Now we have authentication for our user. Next thing is we are going to be selecting an image from our gallery. And now we have selected the image, but we do not know if it's uploaded because we haven't uploaded it yet. So for this purpose, let's go to the gallery one and actually write, write the code that is going to be uploaded in the file. So first thing is like we have the file here and say if image is not no, then continue because it means that it is actually there is an image to upload right the next thing is we will we can do several things to key or like name our images like i will i'm going to be naming this out of flutter pub add uuid because they, like uuids are giving you a unique name to be used and what you need to do is i will just say final key equals to UUID at version four, for example, and you just give this const. Actually, if it's going to be a const, this can be a const. Yeah. If the operation is not const, but the object is const. That is why it, it didn't work. Anyway, so now we have a proper name per se. Now let's name this file into a file that we are going to be using. We know for sure that the path is like the image is definitely, definitely something that we have. And after we have the file, what we need to do is we will just say that final result wait amplify dot storage dot upload file so we need to do a couple of things here and i will add an on progress which is something that is really cool because i'm sure you will love it all right so we have everything here and the local is actually you can see that it's a file so it is a file that we are going to be uploading from our local the key is the name of the file and lastly the progress is the percentage that is uploaded so we need to be sure that everything that we upload is in the right place so let's add a quick text here i will just say that body and this body is going to have a center and the center is going to have a child that either it is going to, like I would just say, in progress equals to minus one. So the progress cannot be minus one, right? So we will say that if progress is equals to minus one, we will just say that just put a size box, which is like a placeholder to fill this child, or if there's a progress, just say that image is getting uploaded and say that progress percent, there's a percentage sign, yeah, here, perfect. So now we have the text and everything that is working for us 
and one problem. No, there's no problem here. Everything is exactly in the place. So let's go back to the progress side and say, okay, progress is equals to progress dot get fraction completed. Okay, so I will turn this into a double and this will be 1.0 and bam. So each time there's a progress change, we will know it. And actually, if I want to see it, I need to set the state. I need to change the state to make it running. And let's run the application one more time. If everything goes according to the plan, we will be able to upload a file for us. The time passes really quickly. Like I've been online since 53 minutes and we were able to do the image picker, the bottom sheet, the uploading mechanism all together in 50 minutes, which is something really cool. Okay, so I'm in the gallery, I picked one. You can see that it is uploading in, I think it is uploaded already because it says like 1%. So what I need to do is if, where is it perfect, it is here. So I will say that if result, if the result is successful, this is what we need to do. If the result is successful, this means that this is not broken. So what we need to do is we need to put a try catch here. So if nothing is broken, then this is perfect. I will just say that on exception catch E and say that like progress equals to minus one. Like I said, state minus one to do. And other way around, if it is successful, it will already say that it is successful. I will just say that set state progress equals to minus one as well. And last thing here is that let's print error image upload, let's say, and let's print this out. Let's restart everything from scratch. Let's hope that it is going to be working. So I am opening this up. I'm opening my gallery. I pick this one. It is already uploaded, I guess. We will, see, we will check it out soon, but cannot connect to the camera. Okay. I guess this is broken. Anyway, so right now it seems like our image has been uploaded, but let's add a, let's add a, the way to see a download link to it so we can be sure that it is actually uploaded. So for this purpose, what we need to do is first, we need to list the files that we have. And for listing these files, what we need to do is we will, so we, we will have four minutes. So what I want to do is, I will just create a quick future builder here, okay? And this future builder is going to have a list, let's say dynamic for now. And it's going to have a context snapshot. All right. And so, okay, we will have this one here. Perfect. So we will just say that if snapshot connection state equals to connection state dot active, which is like if it is working, then we will return a circular progress indicator for us. If not else, this means that I have an items here and this items here is that snapshot of data here. I'm going to just create a list view with it, like which is going to be a really uh, close one, like quick one. And it is going to have a children items dot map put them into a text e plus a to list this should like 
more or less do everything for us. Awesome, perfect. Da -da -da. What we need to do is else. Let's do this, return. And lastly, obviously, we need to have a feature. So the feature is going to do an amplify.search.list. And it said, like, it is basically going to be a list result. So now that, like, for the items, what we need to do is, like, we, do, we need to do an item. Each one is a storage item here and the storage items have like a key so this is what we care about the most and let's run everything let's see okay so you can see that the uploaded files are here let's not the camera on dismiss let's do uh, another install as well so you can see a new one as well there's a tiny build problem but we can fix it later on but overall this is the place that you can see that actually you are uploading the files and it is there. What you can do is once you click on these, you can actually open up a link to the file and use it properly as well. So, but this is all for this week. I don't want to like over, uh, overgo my time. So, Thank you very much for listening. I'm really excited to be here. This is going to be shared on my YouTube channel, Declarative Cast. And I hope it was useful. Like with like over an hour, like around an hour, we did actually image picker and all the operations together. So thank you very much and have a nice rest of the week. Bye-bye.